I mean, that's not the one I wanted at first, but <clears throat> it's for Cordy. All right, I don't know what she's doing, but hey, I'm Destiny. And I'm Miss Parker. Okay, we're both Miss Parker. And this is Shades, Shades of, of Us. us. All right, so I know we're missing a shade of us, but um, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. um, but we're here to um, share Drop our some knowledge on y'all. Okay? Yeah, we're gonna. This is what we're trying to do. Let me break it down real quick. The other shade of us is not here because she's not a teacher, but she's working on it. She's gonna get there. We don't know. But we are educators, and we're going to show you 10 tips, or tell you, matter of fact, 10 tips, 10 tips on how to be a productive, to be a marvelous virtual teacher during a pandemic. Yes, That's even, what though, even though um, my school system is trying to help us go back. But in the, yes, this, is, this video is going to be good because you're getting two perspectives. One from a public school perspective and one from a private school perspective. Because I teach um, private school third grade. And I teach public school second grade. Um, so here we are. And I feel like a lot of these tips can be um, good and adaptable for all grade levels. So Donna, this is going to get us started. I am in my first year of teaching third grade. And she's been at it for a while. How many this years? is my, I'm just starting my fourth year. Four so. years. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're getting also a perspective from a new teacher and close to a vet. Getting okay. to a vet. Yep. All right. So I'm gonna kick it off with the first tip. First tip, be organized. Okay. Whatever that looks like for you. Okay. So I know some people you may get organized by color coordinating and having all things like that. Other people just need to get organized by having some papers. They don't got to be color coordinated, but having them in a stack, just knowing whose paper it is. And when since we're virtual, um, I don't have a lot of papers. Speaking from my own perspective, I do a lot of things, just all technology. So, you know, we don't have our students. So that's a blessing that you don't have to have so much paper. Everything can be transmitted through the computer. So the way I stay organized, we use Google um, Classroom in my school for our platform. So I stay organized by making sure I have a slide set up for the week and I know what's going to happen for the week. And then I have um, the grade set up in Google Classroom and it's all in Google Classroom. That's the thing, the key to online things. They already set it up mostly for you. All you've got to do is enter it in and know what works for you because you can you can make it um, a different format. You can organize it in different ways, but what works for you? That's the most important thing. But still, everybody has to have some form of organization during, especially during um, virtual teaching. If you don't have that, you're going to be showing up to class all late, not knowing which student's information is which and things like that. So make sure you're organized. I would say in this virtual setting, even just in the building, have a comfortable workspace. Meaning, if you need a cushion on your chair, you need to have a pillow, dress comfortably. I mean, I like to dress like I'm still going to work, but, you know, still in a comfortable way. I'm not trying to wear, like, even in a building, I wasn't really trying to wear high heels and stuff like that. Like, I'm wearing, like, cute little um, work sneakers. And they have, like, like cute professional work sneakers at, like, Marshalls and TJ Maxx. So just be comfortable, whatever that looks like for you. I have to have a cup of coffee. Some people have a cup of tea, something to sip on when you're just getting a little frustrated. Something just right there beside you, like... Sips tea or <laughs> sips coffee like me. Um, so that would be my advice is just to be comfortable because sometimes when I get frustrated, I'm like, at least I got my cup of coffee right here. I could just sip on and be quiet for a second or my little ginger mints because ginger is really good for the mind. So I have like a ginger mint or ginger ale or something beside me to help bring me back to center when I get a little bit um, frustrated or anxious. Tip number three, get tips. Okay, get tips, get advice. Okay, from... Um, for this perspective, I'm talking about getting tips and advice from like um, online online services or different platforms. Um, there's been teachers who probably are more familiar with virtual teaching and are maybe um, doing it in a really great way and they want to share it with others. So there's a lot of resources online where they're telling you, oh, do this in your class to bring some excitement. Do this in your class if your student is struggling in this area. So get tips, but also a side to that is don't get too much. So if you're anything like me, 
if I get too many tips, if I get too much advice and I try to use a lot of different resources, I feel overwhelmed. And then I'm like, I don't know what to do because now I got this I could do, I got this I could do, I got this I could do. So my rule is to pick maybe three big things that you continuously do because we know students like students like um when you have some type of consistency. Uh, consistency going on so if you can do those three things and they're enjoying it you see okay they like this i'm gonna keep doing this and then add some things every now and then once you feel more comfortable but start off with three start out with three main things that you do so for me i do brain breaks um i continuously do slides every day to keep them organized on what to do and also um throughout the week i I have a fun Friday activity that I do with them so those three things they look forward to every week and I was able to get some resources from other teachers online that helped me realize what to do and what to add into that so make sure you get tips and advice but not too much that's good Dami. um so that kind of leads me to the to my next one then which is to utilize resources so like teacher resources older teachers that have been working at your school longer than you or online platforms like Nearpod they have pre-made um free pre-made lessons up um it is well i would say for younger kids you just have to make sure they know the code that's the thing i tell my students because they're seven eight years old write it down on a piece of paper so that you can easily type it in because some of them going back and forth they don't it's too much for the older kids it's very pretty simple i don't feel like there's a lot of problems with it i love how nearpod is very interactive you can draw on the slides there's multiple choice questions that you can use you can basically choose what you want to do and you can do pop put powerpoints like just copy and paste your powerpoint on there and do a voiceover so maybe you're absent virtually and you're like oh man i don't have a sub you can just have a PowerPoint slide where you're talking on there, and it's really been effective. My scholars really like it. Um, Class Dojo is amazing. I'm a different di than Dynasty. I like using a lot of platforms. Like I just be like, whoa, yeah, whoa, whoa. Really but I, the th one of the main platforms I've been using since I started teaching was cla has been Class Dojo. Class Dojo has so much stuff on it. It has a timer, music. Kids um, can see their points in. Our school does from from Friday. Um, some schools do. I don't know if Dynasty does, but my school gives prizes to kids on, on so that the parents can come up to the school and get it. So it's really good that our, our team has done that. But like, even if your school doesn't do that, you can give kids like stuff. You can incentivize Class Dojo. You can change the points that you want. So like, if you want it to be one of the things that we're having a problem with is students typing inappropriate stuff in the chat. Mm -hmm. So maybe you can be like one of the points, like you get point a point just Wait, for having. Y'all can't mute the chat? No, well, yeah, but it's very helpful. Like, I mute the chat. well, the That's chat, my favorite button. Well, mute. But the chat is very helpful for like, for, I teach math and I like it for engaging with them with math because mm -hmm. it's like, what do y'all think the answer is? Ooh, type in the chat, mm -hmm. centimeter, yeah. meter, and they be like, meter, centimeter, and it's a good way for me to not have to call on people sometimes just to see. Oh, I see that this person typed that, mm -hmm. but I just think um, class dojo is really effective. Um, even if your school doesn't do incentives, you can do like free homework passes mm -hmm. for kids or. They get to be the winner for the week, so they can choose. I said, like, you choose a song because you're the winner of the week. So you choose a brain break or you choose a song. So I think kids really, they really love that. Mm -hmm. And a lot, Generation Genius is good for science. It's free as well. Um, there's just so many platforms. Again, don't overwhelm yourself, but definitely look into them because there's like so many math manipulative um, platforms, like um, Braining Camp or something like that, uh, where you can use like base 10 block is really good um and they have like fractions just use it google free manipulatives um teacher pay teachers pay teachers sometimes they have free stuff now sometimes they have stuff that costs money I just went on a tangent. Sorry, Class Dojo is the best platform. I'm sorry. Girl, you need to ask him. You can get a sponsorship. The way Class Dojo in. sponsored me. Like, I know y'all platforms. You can edit skills. Kids get Girl. points for muting their mic. It's... If you didn't get nothing from this video, Class Dojo. Class Dojo has social okay. emotional videos. Like, please download Class Dojo. It's free. And you can connect the parents through it. It's like an app. And parents can, like, participate on there. Love class dojo. Take time for yourself. All right. So this is just for all the teachers. Uh, kind of forget like the all the resources we've been like throwing resources at child for this re uh, for the first part of this video. But most importantly, take time for yourself. Now at the beginning when we have training and stuff, 
we said that Wednesdays were off for our teachers. So I don't know about where you guys teach or anything if you're Wednesday. educators. And they said, Wednesdays, you're off. You know, the teachers got excited like, oh, we get a day off in the middle of the week. But no, we have meetings and we have uh, parent, meetings. teacher, just all meetings. Meetings all day, basically. Work. I go exercise something. That's like um, time for myself, like riding a bike. It's like healthy but it also it's just like a breather for me because i know when i'm done with work i'm looking forward to i get to go outside and just get some fresh air and breathe and get my mind off of stuff yes. tip number five you want to um Ooh, this is six actually i was five next <laughs> tip basically take breaks for yourself as dynasty said she kind of stole mine i was gonna <laughs> I said the same thing. Give yourself a break. But I, I like to take breaks within the, the work day. So not just like on the weekend, but also like take breaks. Like after you finish your class oh, block, yeah, you be say. like, <laughs> this is me. I swear. Right after I finish with my first after morning block, I'm like, I be having shouting breaks. Sometimes I be hitting this real quick. Sometimes I do a little liturgical dance. Tip number seven. Talk to your coworkers join clubs um so for me since uh, this is really important for me because i'm a new teacher i definitely have to talk to my coworkers. i'm still working on that because i have a hard time sometimes connecting and then virtual makes it even hard join like a club so if your school like is still trying to do virtual organizations for the kids to, for the students to join try and be a part of that so i am a part of like a book club that they started at the school this year so i'm like helping facilitate that and that's helping me like in interact with other teachers and just um also <laughs> connect with other students that i don't have in my class so make sure you just still are trying to be social in some type of format the next tip will be um create a google voice number so dynasty doesn't like parents texting her but i'm the type of person Email. I reply quickest. I guess you got to know your best form of communication. Most people's best form of communication is their phone. Like people will reply quicker in my people will reply quicker on their phone than they will an email. I just feel like you can be like your son right now is they playing with their video game. They not even watching the thing. They be like, "Girl, I'm going in there right now. What are you doing?" So in case you don't know what Google Voice is, it's through your Gmail. You just set up a they it's a um an app on your phone. You can also do it on your computer. All the text messages go to your email. That's also a benefit have fun all right that's most important i think have fun with it like don't take it i mean take it serious because you want to make sure we're educating the youth want to make sure they're not just getting a uh, pass by just because it's virtual thursday we had terrific thursday instead of fun friday and we did class bingo and it was really exciting the kids just held up their um held up their whiteboard and if somebody in your row had the same answer as you then you got bingo if somebody across from you all across had um the same answer then they got bingo that was just like an example of some exciting things you can do and then the kids will, like pick that up and that'll be like the highlight of their day and then like the whole next week they'll be like when are we gonna do class bingo and that's another way another incentive you can have well if you make sure you're doing your work if you make sure you're following class rules we're going to be able to have class bingo or have fun friday or something at the end of the week and my last tip would be to just be okay with improvising sometimes your technology might not work so you just need to be have a plan b so sometimes i'm like mm, my technology does not work so i'm i have my phone and my laptop on i just be like maneuvering both and it helps me to be able to see more students so just be okay with improvising not sitting there all day oh it's not working whoa my tech not working <laughs> like because then now the kids are lost they're like wait what you can do like shake your arms out or do something or you oh, can just be like says. take a five minute break here because kids been sitting for so long it's like mm -hmm. if you need to go to the bathroom go to the bathroom come back at this time setting my timer now and that could be a way of you getting yourself together and giving the kids a chance to go grab a snack real quick or go to the restroom don't sure be you hard on yourself just keep pressing if you're going through a rough time right now just keep pressing you got it all right, so don't forget to like, comment, and, and subscribe. subscribe. And check we'll, out our other videos if you yeah. haven't. And Stay we'll in see you guys in our next video. Thank you for watching. Bye. Bye. Sometimes I journal. Sometimes I take a walk in the middle of that. Sometimes I just go get a smoothie. Messed up my throat today because <clears throat> I couldn't sing the way I wanted to. But do what you got to do in the middle of that. A lot of times during my break at home, my bursting? <laughs> this is my mask. <laughs>